The SAF today that has been built up is a deterrent force. And it sends a strong signal to all that Singaporeans value our independence and will fight to protect it. This signal, this unequivocal signal of deterrence is priceless. The SAF has also responded well to security challenges, even unexpected ones, as we've done in Afghanistan and the Gulf of Aden. Another test that validated whether our SAF is ready was our response to the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004. Because if you remember, this happened on Boxing Day, so there was no prior warning. But we were able to quickly dispatch a Charlie 130 aircraft with supplies and helicopters to assist in the efforts, as well as our LST, our landing ship tank. The RSS Endurance carried over 400 people, more than 50 vehicles, and a large amount of relief supplies. This was, of course, to Aceh. And this was before we realized also that other parts were hit. You remember the epicenter? It also affected Krabi and across in Thailand. So within days, we had, the second, we had to send our second LST. It was deployed. And then a third. At this time, our fourth and remaining LST was deployed in the Northern Arabian Gulf. For your information, we only have four LSTs. All deployed, 100% operational efficiency, button push, all out, deployed, ready, men and machine working well. It is because we've invested steadily, trained our men, made sure that our systems are optimized, that we are able to do this. And when called to do more, the SAF will step up. Will step up. Ms. Ellen Lee asked about our national maritime security system, and the SAF has stepped up to coordinate and control this maritime security system. We have done well thus far, but MINDEF and the SAF must again be positioned strongly for the future. Mr. Sito Yipin, Mr. Nicholas Fang, and Mr. Pritam Singh asked about this. The question is, what are we building for the future? So I thought instead of telling you, I'll try to show you. I think it's much easier. Let me illustrate with a schematic of what the SAF might look like in the SAF in 2030. You'll find this in your goodie bag, uh, this particular picture. And basically, it says current plan and future. The SCF in 2030 will be one with all parts highly connected, which means that whether it's the fighter pilot in the air, the sailor out on the oceans, or the soldier on land, each will be able to see the big picture and beyond that, speak to each other to jointly target threats and, orchestrated, or and orchestrate responses. Let me repeat that. Whether you're a fighter pilot, a sailor in the ocean, a soldier on land, you'll be able to see the big picture speak to each other, orchestrate targets, jointly target threats, and orchestrate responses. Sounds simple, but very, very difficult to do. This concept of a network force is now a reality, and the SAF is a front runner in global terms in realizing the full potential of a networked military. In 2030, our F-16s would have been upgraded with what we call the ASAR radars, the active electronically scanned array radars, which are more precise, which are, can see further and perceive greater precision, and will have more precise air-to-ground munitions. The F-16s upgraded with our F-15s will be able to defend our airspace ably. In addition, we have acquired our next generation fighter aircraft, which I think Mr. Pritam Singh Ask about. We're not quite ready to decide yet. We'll take our time because our F-16s and our F-15s serve us uh, for this for the near term and medium term. We will also have in place multi-layered air defense capabilities with the deployment of the SPIDER and S-30 surface, surface to air missiles. In other words, layers of air defense. Our current KC-135's aerial tankers will have been replaced by the Airbus A330 multi-role tanker transport, which we have decided to acquire. The MRTT or the A330 can hold 20% more fuel than our current KC-135's and will extend the range of our fighters through air-to-air -air refueling. The, M the Airbus 330 can also double up as a cargo and troop airlift to deploy troops and equipment 
to oversee sites further away, as we've done in HADR operations. You'll be familiar with the A330 because you fly in some of uh, these commercial planes. For our Navy, the two Type 218 submarines will be in operation together with our two Archer-class submarines. Our frigates operating the Sikorsky naval helicopters and our new littoral mission vessels will form the mainstay of our surface fleet. The naval helicopters have proved to be effective and versatile for a wide range of missions. When we deployed them in the Gulf of Aden, they validated their usefulness in counter-piracy missions. And therefore, the SAF has decided to acquire two more naval helicopters. The SAF has also found the multi-role LST to be an effective workhorse in our relief efforts. So whether it was in Indian Ocean, tsunami, the Northern Arabian Gulf, whether it was to uh, relief efforts to elsewhere, they were found to be effective. But uh, if there was one limitation, it was in their carrying capacity. We, have there, we are therefore studying carefully the need for larger LSTs that can carry more helicopters as well as more cargo. The Army in 2030 will certainly be more mobile. I'm talking about the Army now. In the next 10 years, the number of units that will operate on wheel or track platforms will almost double. So whatever we have now in 10 years, they will double in numbers, and this will create more mobile units. This includes the Terex infantry fighting vehicles to deal with threats in an urban environment. The Terexes will be linked to UAVs to see further, better, and act more decisively. Mm -hmm. The Bionixes will also be upgraded, and this will be operationalized by 2030. By 2030, the SAF also expects that future systems that are currently prototyped or thought about will be probably part of our day-to-day -day use. Possibilities include the multiple micro UAVs for individual soldiers. Some of you may have seen on, Udo, uh, on YouTube these gyrocopters that are swarming. Very likely that with individual soldiers will be able to use them. Or robotic mules that can carry very heavy loads and follow soldiers autonomously. I know this will be every soldier's dream where a robot mule carries your rifle, but uh, don't get ahead of yourself. I mean, this is for serious stuff. We will continue to test these capabilities in realistic terrain and scenarios, for example, as we did in Forging Sabre 2013, where we deployed the widest range of platforms from precision munitions to date, F-15s, F-16s, Apaches and Chino helicopters, and our high-mobility artillery rocket system. <coughs> I'm painting you a snapshot of the SAF 2013 so that you can see what our defense spending is moving towards in visual terms. And these capabilities of the SAF, if achieved by 2030, should provide Singaporeans the confidence that Singapore can be protected. I say confidence, not certainty. The future is as always unpredictable. And I would also remind members of this House and Singaporeans who have asked whether we are too far ahead or whether we are too well protected, that as a small country of only 700 square kilometers and about 4 million residents, our vulnerabilities will always exist. We can't erase these vulnerabilities. We can mitigate them, prepare the best we can for our defenses, the resources available, but we must be resilient enough to withstand the unforeseen. But most importantly, whether we can deter would-be aggressors for another 50 years and achieve peace depends not on advanced systems or weaponry, no matter how sophisticated, but our people and their resolve to defend our island home. 